Yes, anyone who's getting started, it's going to be hard, but the journey is absolutely worth it. Whatever your passion is, is there a company out there that would pay you to do that in front of people? Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Pro Tips, the podcast. This is the show where I have a conversation with other successful content creators. I ask them some questions, I try to surface their best tips so you can improve your content, reach more people, and hopefully make some money with your content. Today, I'll be interviewing Jeff Evans, who creates content for multiple platforms. Jeff has two different YouTube channels. He's also active on TikTok, Twitter, and, and this is why I really wanted to get him on the show, Jeff has a lot of experience with live streaming. So in this episode, we are going to learn everything you need to know to get started live streaming, to get started on Twitch. I have divided my questions for Jeff into three categories. We'll talk about how he became a content creator. Then we'll dive deeper into the live streaming tips and strategies. And toward the end of the podcast, Jeff will answer some questions about creating income streams around his passions and how to start making a living from your content. I guarantee you, you'll get a ton of value from this episode. So let's get into it. All right, Jeff. Welcome to Pro. Hey, yeah. Hey, thanks for having me. It's awesome to be on here. Yeah, awesome to have you as well. I think we have a lot of things to discuss today. So, Jeff, my first question to you, in order for us and our audience to get to know you, can you tell us a little bit about your background and what led you to becoming a content creator? I guess it depends how we look at it, because I have a few different. I know we'll talk about it a little more. I have several different things that I do, uh, and that is all due to you know like. Like every other millennial, ADHD, uh, like crazy and saw a lot of loves, a lot of passions. But originally, the way that I got into content creation actually has to do with my faith. And so I'm a youth pastor. And so like that's kind of one of my predominant things is that I'm a youth pastor and I'm passionate about what I get to do there. Uh, and I actually had a student at one point who lost his faith because of what he had watched on YouTube. So that kind of led me down a rabbit hole like, hey, if YouTube is being used for for this reason, for teachings of this sort, then why can't it be used the other way around? And so I originally got started about five years ago and I started making just teaching videos, Christian teaching videos, where I would get on and I would teach parts of scripture and just share what I believe. And And so it originally started as that, you know, five years ago, and it's kind of twisted and evolved into what it is today. But the original start was just so that I could get on and share my faith with people and teach what I believed and let it go from there. And, and as we kind of go through the different areas of my content, we'll realize it kind of is still the same mission. The mission hasn't changed, but the avenues and the ways that I do it has changed. If that makes sense. Yeah, it does make sense. So let's break down a little bit about the different channels you're currently mm -hmm. creating content for. Because I've seen on YouTube, you have two main channels. Can you break down for our audience, like where do you share your content and mm -hmm. what are your different channels? So the two YouTube channels I have, the first one is just my name is Jeff Evans. And it is my Christian teaching channel, but it's really evolved a little bit more into a, a reaction channel. And so I react to some more like secular music. I don't know if you're familiar with like Tom McDonald and Dax. And they have some really like deep emotional, almost like, you know, hip hop rap songs. So I do a, a pastor reacts to those and that that form. And it's really, you know, we'll listen to the song, we'll talk about the emotions and the ties and how that relates to, to our faith and you know, what Jesus does for us and those things. And so that is probably my larger channel. The secondary channel is actually my Canva channel. And so it is just Dr. Heels, which is my gaming persona. And so that is where my other background comes in. So uh, I'm a graphic designer. I've been a graphic designer for about 12 years. Okay. Goodness, I'm getting old every time I talk about that. <laughs> and so I've been a freelance graphic designer for 12 years. And whenever I got into streaming, and so I stream over on Twitch, when I got into streaming, I realized that gamers are terrible graphic designers. Uh -huh. And so I wanted to put out some content to help gamers um, basically build a better brand and not just use the pre-made stuff that everyone else is using because you'll scroll through streams and you're like, oh, I've seen that overlay. I've seen that overlay. And so my goal was I just want to make some tutorials to teach gamers to build a better brand on a budget. And so that's all my whole tagline. And honestly, I didn't start off with Canva. Shame on me because I use Canva every day at church. But I actually started off um, trying like Pixlr and like Photop and doing video stuff in DaVinci Resolve and stuff. And then one day it hit me. I was like, why don't we try Canva? And I did. And everyone has loved it. Like my audience loved it. And it's been amazing. It's actually how I became a Canva verified expert is through that YouTube channel and me just 
trying to teach gamers how to make their branding better and be kind of creative with the tools we have. Okay. And I've went through both of them. I did watch a couple of pastor reacts to the song. Okay, yeah. And uh, that was pretty good. I like how you mix kind of culture with religion and mm, try yeah. to deliver the message of the religion via the culture, aka the song. And because these artists, they are it's not like your traditional religious song per se, but it's right, more yeah. like a normal rap song. So I found these very interesting. And the way you react to the video and use that as a platform to talk about the faith and uh, to talk about your religion, is, it was really interesting. I think quite an original mm -hmm. approach as well to the church and to teaching about religion. And I love also like the big contrast with the other channel, like uh, the Dr. <laughs> Hill channel, where it's a different Jeff there. It's like same mission, like you said, like you still want, mm -hmm. we can see that we, you want to bring value to your audience that mm -hmm. uh, really reflects through your content but you teach about something completely different you right you said, like you want to empower streamers to build their brand and i think that's a very unique use of canva cool um, nice. tell me a bit more because you're also on other platforms i've seen you on TikTok. <laughs> you talk about something again like different more about mm -hmm. games dungeon and dragon uh, so like, tell us a bit more about like this adventure. And this is one of those things where everything seems different, but they're all connected. And so the Dr. Hills YouTube channel, it is absolutely there to you know help gamers build a better brand, but it's also to bring people to my stream. And when they come to my stream, that is an opportunity for me to hang out with them, get to know them, play games with them. But at the end of the day, it's an opportunity for me to also share the gospel. And so on, on my stream where I'm gaming, I'm also talking about God and talking about my faith. And, and so we actually have channel rewards on Twitch. And so when, when people stay on your channel, they get points for stay, being on your channel and then cash those in. And so some of the rewards I have are like a random item sermon. And so people can choose anything in the world. And I have to try to preach a 60 second sermon on that thing. And so it's very interesting, you know, done some weird things. But I say that because the Dr. Hill's TikTok channel, that's sort of the goal of it as well is to bring people to the stream. But yeah, so it's specifically on Dungeons and Dragons. And so it is in my niche, my thing is teaching. And so uh, I don't even do entertainment right, I don't think, because on TikTok, I teach. And so uh, on TikTok, I make videos to help dungeon masters and people that run TTRPG games show them resources, almost how I show gamers how to use Canva. I show dungeon masters how to use all the tools that are online. And they're just thousands of free tools that can help you improve your games and stuff. And so that's specifically what I do on TikTok. And so yeah. uh, a completely different you know, different content, but it is kind of for the same mission. And that is to bring people to the Twitch stream where we can hang out, play games and share the gospel. Okay. So on Twitch, you have one main channel, right? You have only this yeah. one channel. Just one channel. Yeah. Okay, great. We are going to talk more in details about live streaming and Twitch. Mm -hmm. The second part of this interview, I still have a couple of questions about your content creator journey. Was it difficult to start? Like, because I know a lot of people watching us are themselves like trying to start their content creation business or online presence. Tell us a little bit about some of the challenges you went through when you began that journey of being a content creator. Absolutely. And I think anything that you start and you begin learning is going to be difficult. I think it's Sean Cannell that says your, your first video will be your worst video. And that's absolutely true. And my first video isn't even on the internet anymore. Okay. Because it was horrible. It was like, out of focus. I was trying to learn to use a DSLR camera. Like it was out of focus. It was overexposed and I had no microphone. And so yes, anyone who's getting started, it's going to be hard, but the journey is absolutely worth it. And so you'll, you'll watch as your content improves, your setup changes. I know we were talking about our setup before we started recording it, you know, your setup will change. Your content itself may change, you know, specifically what you're doing. So yeah, when I first got started, it was tough because I was teaching myself all new skills. I, I, at that time, I was still a relatively new like graphic designer. I knew how to design, but I knew nothing about video. I had to learn video editing. I think I started with like iMovie and then I got a copy that someone gave me a final cut. And so, yeah, the challenges were there, but then you also have to get really used to, um, and this is where I think that streaming is more difficult than YouTube. And maybe this is different for other people, but when you start making YouTube videos, you can share that around with a couple of friends and you can get your first two or three views that way. When you start on streaming on Twitch, you're sitting there talking to absolutely no one. Because there's no one in your chat and you're sitting there like trying to be entertaining, playing whatever game you're playing and you're talking to yourself. And let's be real, you're going to be talking to yourself for a couple months before you build up the first few viewers that are there. And you're most people, I've never seen anyone jump from zero to 100 viewers unless they got a crazy raid and that doesn't usually last. But usually you'll end up with one or two viewers and those will be like your friends online or your friends that you've shared your channel with. And so, yeah, I think at least in the streaming side of thing, the hardest thing is learning to talk to yourself. And that's one of the things because your stream is not in real time. And so your chat is always going to be 
10 to 30 seconds behind. And so if you're just sitting there not saying anything and not doing anything entertaining, but playing the video game, then the new viewer that came and was going to hang out with you is going to watch you do nothing for 30 seconds before you realize they're there. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be talking to yourself for talking about the game or you know, whatever else you're talking about the entire time. And, and that's really hard to do before you have people in chat. Once you get people in chat, it makes it a lot easier. But for me, like the starting part of, of Twitch uh, or streaming, whether it's Twitch, YouTube, you know, uh, Facebook Gaming, Kick, Trovo, there's so many platforms out right now. The hardest part of starting out is uh, swallowing your pride and realize you're going to be talking to yourself for the first few weeks, probably. Okay, so that, that is streaming. I'm looking forward to jump into that. Before okay. we do, I would love to hear you about how you grew your YouTube channels. Okay. Because that's also kind of a difficult beast to master, like these YouTube channels, and two at the it same is. time. So I think you already answered which one came first. It's the Jeff Evans channel, where you talk about the gossip. What, what made you start a second? second channel and what were the difficulties of managing two channels at the same time? So I grew the, the Jeff Evans channel whenever before I ever start the Dr. Hills channel, the Jeff Evans channel was already around four to 5,000 subscribers. So not massive, but you know, a pretty, pretty good. Most of my videos were getting a, a lot of views. And so I already had that going. And so I kind of had the experience there because I'd already been doing that channel for a couple years. And then I started the Dr. Hills channel and originally it wasn't a tutorial channel. I was trying to get into the gaming entertainment niche. And so I started out by playing video games and doing like let's plays and actual plays and stuff like that of certain games. And those did terrible. I'm not, I don't know, like I am, I think I'm a more of a community gamer. And so people like to get out and hang out with me. But as far as making gaming content, I'm just not that entertaining in that form. And so it was actually an accident how the Dr. Hills niche became a teaching niche because I found on one of these icon sites, I can't even remember which one, that they had packs of icons that worked really good for Twitch emotes. Mm -hmm. um, and so Twitch emotes are kind of like emojis on your phone, but it, every Twitch channel gets their own. And I made that video and it, lo and behold, that video got like 30,000 views where everything else on my channel was getting like 15. And so I was like, maybe we go a little further down this rabbit hole. And so that's really how that whole channel got started was, oh, one video did really good. Let's explore this direction a little more. And kind of the same thing with the reaction videos on the Jeff Evans channel. My teaching videos, I had a few pop off to 10, 11,000 views. I had most was around the three to 500 view range. And, and then I did a reaction to, I actually came out, I literally came out to sit down at my desk to record a different video. And then uh, an artist I just listened to a few weeks prior came out with a song called Church. That's pretty relevant to my niche. And so I was like, why don't we try a reaction video? I did the reaction video within two days, it hit 40,000 views. I was like, let's explore this direction a little more. And so that kind of shifted the whole focus. So for me, and, I, and this may be different for other people, but one of the the main things that I've learned is it's okay to shift in, in certain directions. Now, I, I think if you're making a gaming channel, it's probably not going to fit your audience to jump all the way over to gardening. But if you can kind of deviate just a little bit and do slight shifts in your content to, to find the exact vein that you want to be in, that can be incredibly beneficial. And that's happened for, for both of my channels. As for the difficulty of running two channels, if you go look at my recent uploads, you'll see the difficulty. Is it's hard, especially this past year, I've had a lot of traveling and, and kids and sickness and stuff. I, my uploads are nowhere near as consistent as they used to be. I used to upload to the Jeff Evans channel every week. Then when I launched the Dr. Hills channel, I was trying to do two videos a week. And, and for me, a one man show, it, it was really hard to sustain. I hired an editor for a while and that was that made things a lot easier. But my editor had to go back to college and stuff. And so he stepped away. And so now I'm back to doing all my editing and everything. And so now I'm my goal is to put out a weekly video on the Dr. Hills channel and a bi weekly video on the Jeff Evans channel. And even that is difficult to sustain. There's because a lot of work that goes into it. You know what all too well. I'm telling everybody else. No, <laughs> we have the benefit of being two people. So that helps tremendously. That is, that is nice. Yeah. And I, and I both create, our goal is one video per week each. And we try to also create shorts for the in-between days or community posts. So we try to have content on the channel every single day, but it's mm -hmm. not always like tutorials. Right. Tutorials, we have this commitment of one each, one long form tutorial each per week. And we have been pretty consistent with that. So it's been now over two years that we haven't missed a single week, like our two videos. So that has helped also. Yeah, that's awesome. I think that's one of the secrets of YouTube. Like you need to be consistent with your schedule. Absolutely. I imagine Twitch is the same. So I, I have that question written actually for that part. But being consistent is one of the key success factors for YouTube. A lot of people ask me like, my channel is not growing. What should I do? Well, I tell them like, be consistent. And Absolutely. I take two years for seeing any results. So 
you have to push through these two years of hearing crickets with your yeah. one video a week before you can reasonably say it's working or not working because mm -hmm. for us it was the same the first two years we had almost no results then it starts growing great i have one last question for you before we move on to the next part of the interview how do you deal with fluctuation in your viewership in your income and is there any advice you could give our audience on how to deal with that for me i know that most people on youtube we're familiar with analytics uh and so that's one of the big things get used to looking at your analytics get used to what's working and not working but also get used to like being able to read your analytics and understanding the difference in you know watch time and click through rates and knowing your impressions and so you can kind of tell what the problem is is the problem the thumbnail is it the title is it the content itself was i particularly boring in that video because i've done those i've been wow i was monotone the entire video no wonder everybody clicked off at the 32 second mark and so it's i think it's starting to to realize what works and doesn't work and that's something that again comes in time that comes with experience is that you'll be able to go back and, and kind of figure out why a video didn't do well as for the the fluctuations in pay like in, in income i am still like my content creation is a uh, a side income. I actually work at my church. And so my youth pastor position is my full-time income, but we absolutely, you know, count on the income that comes in from content creation. And so I think this is, and I don't know, because I've never been a, or I haven't been a one platform person in a very long time, but I know that there is a bit of inconsistency when you're focusing on so many different platforms. Now I have, you know, relatively consistent monthly income that comes in, but it can be inconsistent. So a lot of platforms have a minimum threshold you have to hit before they send a check. And so there's, you know, yeah. months where a check doesn't come in from this platform, but then, you know, a, a double comes in from the other and such. So for me, like the, the main thing with dealing with like inconsistency, if, if I were, this were my full-time income, I think that it would hurt me a lot more, but this is where I really focus on figuring out what's working and what's not working and just try to do more of what is working. I heard, maybe it was, I don't know if it's Sean Cannell or another YouTube coach that I heard say, but like they say, do like a three in one method, um, like to do three videos for your audience and one video for yourself. And, yeah. and so that one video for yourself, that's something you're passionate about. That's something that you want to test. That's something, but otherwise you do, you know, your three videos that are specifically what your audience wants. So if you're doing tutorial videos, do three tutorials, and then you can try, you know, one let's play or something. That's just my particular niche. And so, yeah, so that's what I try to do is figure out what gets the views, what keeps, what has the audience retention, what people are watching and enjoying. And for me, I can get a lot of feedback in my other channels too. So people will come to Twitch and they're like, hey, I just watched this video and I loved it. Mm -hmm. uh, or people will come into my Discord and they're, they'll say, hey, I just watched this video and I have a question about this. And so that gives me all more content ideas. Okay. I want to bounce back on something you said. You said that this was not yet your main income. It's still a side business for you. So does that mean that you work full-time for the youth group? Is that a full-time job or do you have like a part-time situation? Because the content creation side of things must take a lot of your time as well. It does. And so my time is very split and I have two kids and a beautiful wife. And so time is very split. And so this is probably, I, you probably shouldn't listen to me on this because I can't say I make the healthiest decision, but I do all of my content creation after my family goes to sleep. Okay. And so I drink a lot of coffee and sleep less than I probably should, but one day we'll get that straightened out. But yeah, so my full-time position, and, and of, of course I work at a church and my schedule is a little bit different than most people's, but my full-time job is at my church, but I, I work Sunday through Wednesday. And so I have Thursday, Friday, Saturday off. And so I usually use Thursday as my video creation days. And so I'm able to kind of put in a, a full-time schedule on Thursdays for that. But then as far as streaming and everything, I do that from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m. Uh, and so that is my my streaming schedule. So wow, yeah, it it it's it's a lot, but I've I've kind of got a cadence going where everything kind of works out. And do you have a like? Uh, you seem also very attached to your day job. So do you yeah. have any goals of becoming a full time content creator, or you are happy with that situation? In a sense. So my my BHAG, as I like to call it, you know, a, a big hairy audacious goal, or for me, it's the big holy audacious goal. Uh, mine is that my content creation one day becomes my full time income, so that I could take my full time income and put it back toward missions. And so what I'd love to see happen is the content creation that I do replace the income that I make for my church, I will continue to be at my church. That is one of my my main driving passions is the position I get to do there. But I'd love to have my content creation to take over that. So then I could take the salary that I make from my church and put it all toward missions. And that's, you know, kind of investing in other missionaries and things like that in my town and, and third world countries and things. So that that is, I call it my BHAG is to one day have this content creation replace the income that I make so that I can put that income toward furthering the gospel. And so that's where I say I have a lot of different things, but we'll find they're all kind of connected. Yeah, they'll come back to this. Yeah. And I like that you have that goal set up for yourself because mm -hmm. the way you're going, I think you're not that far from like yeah. 
a couple of videos really exploding and driving your channel's growth. And sooner than you know, like you could really be making a decent income with the content creation. Yeah, absolutely. It's true when you don't have the financial pressure, like, okay, I do my job because I love doing it, not because right. I need the money. That's probably the best way to do your job because then absolutely. you don't depend on like financial driven decision to make your mm -hmm all your shots. So great. Right. And, and moreover, that you have like very noble goals of uh, kind of giving back through the missions that you want to accomplish and finance. With right. that. Yeah. So that is great. All right, let's move on to the second part of this interview. Let's talk about live streaming, because this is something you do very yeah. well and have a lot of experience with. And I don't. And so I'm always yeah. glad to have like a, some specialist that can teach me and also teach our audience new things that we don't used to talk a lot about on this channel. So let's talk about that. Let's talk about being a live streamer. And my first question would be for someone who's just getting started, what type of content mm -hmm. would you recommend we focus on? So th this is one of the things I work with streamers, you know, specifically, I do a little bit of coaching and things as well. And one of the things I always tell live streamers is don't start with live streaming. It's really hard to starting a live stream with no audience because you're going to do what I talked about earlier. You're going to be streaming to absolutely no one. And that is soul crushing, especially when you feel like you're putting out great content. And so I always encourage someone to start on YouTube, start on TikTok, build an audience somewhere, get your first thousand subscribers somewhere. And then in your community post, Hey, I'm about to start streaming on Twitch and, and build it up, make it hype. Like so in the in your next three videos, put out, hey, make sure you guys come join me. I'm going to be eating a hot chili pepper on stream, you know, like build it up. And so that your first stream, you're not streaming to no one. And so even in the streaming, I suggest because this is something you'll find on Twitch. There is no discoverability on Twitch. No one is going to click on the Fortnite category and scroll for 32 minutes to find your stream with three viewers. And Twitch has started to try to like recommend streams, which has just helped in this last Last year but prior to that it was always high to low so the highest number of viewers are always at the top and so that's your big streamers your thousand viewer streamers are at the top and so you down here with your 10 viewers you have to get your audience somewhere else and yeah. so that's that's where youtube comes in that's where tiktok comes in and so i encourage everyone to build an audience elsewhere and then hype up your stream and then have your first stream and then you'll hit the ground running i didn't do that i started streaming um i had the jeff evans channel but it wasn't anywhere near the same niche. And so when I first started streaming, I was still streaming to no one, even though I had thousands of subscribers on the Jeff Evans channel. It wasn't really the niche for it. And so that's difficult. So I say start somewhere else and then hit the ground running with your live streams. Yep. I love that. That's a great tip. Me, I've been toying around with the idea of start live streaming, probably on YouTube, yeah. because that's where all our audience is trying how to add this experience to the channel, because mm -hmm. I think there's a lot that can be done with Canva and live streaming. I had this idea of maybe creating whiteboard sessions where we would have a Canva whiteboard and people could join in so they could share media at the same time we could design in the document while streaming so oh, yeah oh, that's a good idea yeah this is something i'm trying to develop on top of what we already do and i think it would yeah. bring an interesting like fresh batch of ideas and content and experiences on the channel because it's kind of like once you are into the, the cadence of two tutorials per week it's, mm -hmm. it's just rolling it's nothing right innovative so yeah this is something i'm happy to discuss with you as well like yeah absolutely how to get started tell me about one memorable moment like what's your most memorable moment while live streaming so far okay so um one of the things i like to do in in live streaming is i like to set up goals and things i don't know i'm a goal oriented person and so a few things that i've done is you know i've said hey when we hit this viewer count or when we hit this sub goal we're gonna do something and so i've done Five times now, I've done 24-hour streams. Wow. And so where you're live for 24 hours. And and uh, during the stream, we always do something kind of big. And sometimes we'll do a 24-hour stream for like a charity stream. So we're raising money for something. Sometimes we do it. We're, you know, we're just doing it to have fun, play a bunch of different games and stuff. But I guess like one of my more memorable moments uh, is because it stuck with me is in one of my very first 24-hour streams, I set a goal that if we, I don't even remember what it was, but if we hit some goal, I'd eat a habanero pepper. Uh, on stream and oh my goodness I, I still have clips from it so on twitch you can you can clip if something interesting happens you your viewers can click a button and you'll save it and it'll have that little video forever and i still have clips from it from where i ate and i had like a plug-in at that time that whenever people sent emotes they'd all pop up on the screen uh -huh. and i still have clips where I, I bite in and you could just see all the emotes like the hot emotes and the flame emotes popping uh -huh. up the screen where everybody's commenting and stuff yeah that was uh that that was one of the the one more 
like in the middle of that, I'm like, why did I do this? Yeah. This wasn't, uh, yeah, this was crazy. So that, and, but I don't know, live streaming is one of those things where every stream can be different and every stream can be interesting and every stream can have funny moments. It can have, you know, tense moments. Like sometimes, like I remember one time I was trying to play a game and I was running at that time. I, I had a completely like jank set up because one of the things is it's really hard to game on a Mac computer. My editing computer was a Mac computer. And so I didn't can game on that. So I had a PC that I was, you know, trying to play games on. And one of my viewers just dropped $900 just in the in the middle of the stream, just to like, hey, you know, here's $900. I believe in what you're doing. Get yourself a better computer. And so the PC that I have sitting beside me here is the product of that, that generosity. And and so I, I built this computer and it's lasted until now, but now I've got to do some upgrades to it. But like, I, that's the thing is you never know. And that was like a random Wednesday night. That wasn't yeah. a planned out thing. It's just, you know, different things happen. So I, over the years, I've collected a lot of these memories. Some are goofy and you probably had to be there to understand. But when I was playing a game and, and so the game I was playing, it's called Realm Royale. It's uh, a smaller game, but it's sort of like Fortnite. But when you kill someone, they turn into a chicken and then you got to kill the chicken. And there's this clip out there where some of my friends, they're waiting for me to get out of my game. And so they are watching my stream on their stream. And I down this chicken and literally I it popped back up like three different times. And it in, and the guy ended up killing me. It's, but the, I have like the video there of them reacting to me just uh -huh. making a fool of myself. And so every night can be amazing and funny. And, and it's just you have great times. Yeah, it just seems like a lot of fun indeed. Like yeah. the community, the streaming culture. I think that's really what it is. Like, yeah, uh, absolutely. Like uh, this seems really interesting, to be honest. What kind of equipment do you need? Do you absolutely need, I would say, for starting streaming? And is it possible to start without spending like a crazy amount of money? Okay, so when I first started, I, actually, I still have the camera over there. So I do... <laughs> Every time I start talking about what I do, I'm like, I realize my ADHD more and more. So I do I do crafting on, on stream too. And so I, I make resin dice, which, you know, in the D&D community, dice are a huge thing. Like I have a random, you know, set of dice right here. Yeah. Um, and so I make resin dice. And so, but the camera that I started with on streaming was a C920 webcam. It was the $40 webcam, $30 maybe. But now it's even easier than that because you can use your phone as a webcam. And so, I mean, get yourself a small little tripod mount to mount it up there. Use uh, Elgato has a which Elgato, when you get into streaming, Elgato is going to be everything. I'm not just saying that because I'm sponsored by Elgato, but that was like an amazing thing that happened. Elgato makes so many incredible things, but they actually have an app you can download on your phone and use your phone as a webcam. And at, when you're using your phone as a webcam, you can also use it as a microphone. I would encourage you to upgrade your microphone very quickly, but honestly, if you have a phone and a computer, you're set. And honestly, if you weren't planning on doing gaming, then you don't even really need the computer. You can just stream directly from your phone. If you just want to do just chatting or talking or even like D&D &D and stuff like that, you could do in person from a phone. And so that's the bare minimum. I don't recommend many people stop there because I mean, Twitch is a lot like YouTube. There is people expect higher quality because there's a lot higher quality streams out there. But you can absolutely get started with bare minimum with a phone or a cheap webcam there's even more out there but that was when i started streaming the c920 was like the top budget webcam yeah. at the time but yeah it's it, it really it's not much to get started but if you want to continue to grow there's you can go many different directions in the way that you want to go we've all had like the c920 <laughs> yes like, yeah yeah absolutely it was the best webcam it's still a very good webcam oh. i think it was very easy to shoot with a c920 because you just connect it via usb to your computer yeah. and it just so. records everything on your hard drive so you don't need to go through like for example like even if you create tutorials like i use that camera for a very long time great so we can start with a phone and a computer. I heard you talking about Elgato. It is true. I'm using a stream deck right here. Not a streamer. <laughs> I'm just using it with a bunch of the Stream deck's amazing. Yeah, stream deck is amazing. So for those of us watching who don't know what a stream deck is, it's a simple little keyboard like this with some keys that you can assign to different features. Yeah. So you could probably, yeah, we all, oh, you have the nice. Yeah, the one with the knobs. That's so nice for live streaming. <laughs> the fancy uh, <laughs> uh, stream deck. <laughs> so yeah, stream deck is cool. And you can assign these buttons with whatever you want. It could be start your video recording. It could be just, uh, like adjusting your lights. It could be just having a simple emoji. I use it when I answer the comments of my audience on YouTube. I have a bunch of different emojis set up. So 
instead of opening the emoji menu and choosing it, yeah. I just like I have all my emojis there. I can just tap on them. Stream Deck is a cool little toy to have for content creators, for streamers. Well, I have yeah. a whole Canva page set up on mine. And so uh, yeah. Canva like shortcuts and, yeah. and even using the dials on mine, I can use that to adjust my position back and forth. Oh, I yeah. can use it for a slight nudging and stuff. And so I have all my dials and stuff set up. I have a whole Canva page on my Stream Deck. That's and, cool too, and when yeah. I'm working on like my work computer, I feel almost lost without it because I'm so yeah. used to like my copy style and stuff. I don't even know what the keyboard shortcut is for that because I have it on my stream deck. And so the copy style, paste style, like those buttons, I, I yeah. just have all the stream deck. It's awesome. Yeah. So this is not sponsored by Elgato. <laughs> it's like stuff we no. like. Uh, both of us like content creators. There is something else. Like you mentioned this software from Elgato that lets you use your phone as your webcam. If you are a Mac user and you have an iPhone, you don't even need that software. It's built oh, in yeah. the QuickTime. QuickTime? QuickTime. You can sync your iPhone camera with your QuickTime mm -hmm. and then it's wireless. So you just put your phone somewhere, it right. becomes a camera. So that's pretty cool. All right, let's move on with the questions. So that was about the equipment. Now let's talk a bit about the platforms. I think I already know what you're going to say, but what is the easiest platform to start with? Is it Twitch? Is it YouTube? Is it Facebook? Is it IG? So in the streaming world, this question might get me canceled. Uh, but in the streaming world, there are uh, a lot of big platforms. Uh, there's there's two big platforms and there's a lot of small ones. There is Twitch and YouTube. Those are the biggest streaming platforms. And then we have Provo just popped up. We have Kick that popped up. I think Rumble is now streaming. And so like there's a lot of these that pop up and there's been several in the past. We've had Mixer, we've had Facebook Gaming and they all come in really hot and they look really good and then they die. And so if you watched me last, a couple months before I went to Israel, if you watched then, I was actually streaming on Kick. And this might get me canceled. Was it because I believed in Kick? It was because I was going to make a video of, you know, I streamed on Kick for 30 days, but I didn't make it 30 days because I went back to my roots of streaming to two viewers and I didn't care for that. <laughs> and so it was not only that, but they also didn't have like phone functionality. So I couldn't stream from my phone and I was trying to stream some like disc golf and, and stuff like that too. And so they didn't have that. And so I ended up jumping back over. And so like, I think there is value in these other platforms, but what I've seen through the years of streaming is that Twitch and YouTube are the monsters, right? They're the ones that stay when everything else dies. And so I would absolutely recommend Twitch or YouTube. And if you're wanting to do gaming, I highly recommend Twitch. Okay. Um, if you already have a YouTube channel, like what you're wanting to do, Ronnie, I think YouTube is the best bet for you. You already have your audience and it's perfectly aligns with your niche. My big thing about streaming on YouTube is that I find that when people are on YouTube, they're not there for live streams. They're there to watch, you know, relatively short form content or, you know, evergreen videos that have been edited and they're ready to sit there and they're ready to learn or be entertained in a more short form. Whenever you're on in a live stream, you're there for engagement. You're there because you want to talk to the streamer. You want to hear what they're doing. Like you, you want to actually have that back and forth. I think that's different when you're on YouTube and you already have a community set up because I think your community would love to come and hang out with you and watch how you design and interact directly with you. But if you're just a gamer and your YouTube channel isn't about gaming, I just don't think that it's going to do as well. And so if your YouTube channel is you know, not specific to gaming, um, I recommend streaming on Twitch and then sending your YouTube, your you know, in your videos, always put like, hey, if you want to hang out with me, I stream over on Twitch these days a week. And yeah, so I recommend gamers to be on Twitch. And I recommend if your streaming content matches your video content to do that on YouTube. Okay, that makes a ton of sense. And I do understand now why you prefer Twitch over YouTube because you already had two YouTube channels, but you mostly game on Twitch. Game yeah. and also like talk about the gospel, uh, as yeah, I understand. Yeah. Uh, and there, there's been a back and forth because I've, I've thought about it too because I ha honestly have a bigger YouTube on YouTube or I have a bigger audience on YouTube than mm -hmm. I do on Twitch. But every time like I've done test streams on YouTube and things and I just find that my audience on YouTube they want, you know, the evergreen content. They want the edited videos. And then my audience on Twitch, they want to hang out and talk with me. Yeah. And so I'll post on my YouTube channels, hey, I'm going live over here. And those that want to hang out and talk with me, they'll come over to Twitch. Okay. Is Twitch free as well for people who want to subscribe to your channel? Is it completely free for them? So, okay, the terminology is a little bit different, but it's free to have a Twitch account. It's free to stream on Twitch. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's free to follow a channel, but a sub or a, a subscribe on Twitch is actually a paid support. And this is one of the things that I've also noticed is a different between Twitch and YouTube is in Twitch, supporting uh, monetarily is built into the culture. Mm -hmm. And so it's not and I know YouTube's trying with their their memberships and stuff like that. I don't know if you guys have gotten that going or anything, but I haven't even set that up. So I, I don't know for sure. But I know that on Twitch, when I first started, just giving monetarily is just already kind of baked in. People are used to like, when they come to your channel, they want to sub. And so when you sub to a channel, you pay $5 a month to, to be to basically support that channel. And in doing so, you get a little badge next to your name. And, um, and so as a streamer, you set up these badges that change based on the months of support. And so I have 
I'm set up for one month, three months, six months, nine months, 12 months. Uh, and then the 12 month is, you know, the gold and it's fancy. And so every month you support your badge kind of gets upgraded and then you get access to that channel's emotes and you can use the emotes in any channel you go to. And so that's where the paid part of Twitch comes in and that's where the community support comes in. And then people, they can sub for themselves, but they can also gift subs. And so sometimes people come in and they'll just gift 10 subs. And so yeah. random people in your channel at that time get a free subscription. Ah, okay, uh, so it's randomized. That's interesting. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You can also choose someone to gift it to. So if my wife is ever in stream, she has never once subscribed to my stream, but if if she comes in, people see that she doesn't have the badge, they automatically gift her a sub. So yeah, you can choose who to gift it to, or you can just completely randomize it if you just and want to gift. The sub is per stream. So every time you start a new stream, you people have to subscribe to it, or is it no, no, it's it's per month. Per month. Ah, yeah. So the subs are reset each month. Okay, I see what you mean. It's very similar, or well, I guess YouTube just simply copied what was working on Twitch because that's exactly <laughs> yeah. what a membership yeah. is on YouTube. Basically, it's people paying a recurring fee every month and the access to different tiers mm -hmm. and they unlock perks like like what you mentioned emotes on twitch where you have your custom emojis and your badges that evolve mm -hmm. around like with time like if you've been a member a paying member of the channel for a month two months three months like you have a different badge right uh, yeah that's, that's exactly how it is yeah and they also have the super thanks so that's just like a tip people can give you or send you for mm -hmm. different amounts of dollars and that allows their comment to pop in a different color or something like that in the chat. So uh, Twitch has what they call bits. And so this is like, you know, Twitch currency, 100 bits is equal to $1. And so it's a way that people can kind of give to the streamer and they can give a lot. They can give like 50,000 bits and, you know, it's 50 bucks, but it's a big deal. But then most streamers have set up where you can just give a tip as well. Um, yeah. And most of us use PayPal or stream elements or something like that. And so that's one thing I, I've noticed about like the Twitch culture is like giving and 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 monetarily supporting a streamer and stuff is just it's just in the culture. Every you know most viewers on Twitch realize that's a thing, and and so if they're able, they do it. And you know if they're not, then a lot of times they'll get gifted subs and things like that. Anyway, if they're they're consistent in a stream. Again, it comes down to the culture of Twitch, which I think is quite yeah. different from the culture on YouTube. YouTube mm -hmm. is more mainstream, I would say. So everybody's on yeah, YouTube, yeah. and people expect free content also on YouTube. They, they, exactly. Yeah. If you don't want to buy a course or you go to YouTube. YouTube and you try to find that's why also, like the keywords Canva Pro like how to get Canva Pro for free is so like <laughs> it's like yeah number one search about Canva I guess is this like uh, because everybody's trying to hack their way around like uh, the system right it's internet nature internet nature that's a good way to put it yeah very true cool let's continue any experience about negative comments like how do you handle negative comments or trolls in the life of a live streamer so uh I'm a Christian streamer on Twitch I get some trolls okay. <laughs> And so, uh, yeah, I mean, and and honestly, like, I haven't gotten as many as I honestly I would expect, but I, I get I get my fair share. So one thing on Twitch, and I know this is the same on YouTube, uh, you have moderators set up, and so there are people in your channel that you trust, and and usually I try to take care of my mods. They're awesome, and I realize that I stream at a crazy time too. So if they're there from 11 p.m. to 2 a.m., you know that means a lot. And so usually I'll, I'll, my consistent viewers that want it, some viewers don't want the responsibility, but the, my consistent viewers, I'll send them a message and say, hey, would you you be willing? You know the channel rules you know how it goes would you be willing to to be a mod and they're you know absolutely or no nah, i just don't want to really commit to anything i just want to hang out and i'm like hey i understand that and so mods are or one way my mods know usually know the rule if someone comes in and they're just a troll they're they're swearing and they're talking negatively about whatever's going on uh we try not to ban anyone unless they're just coming into promo stuff you get those bot accounts that come in and we ban those but everyone else we time out because we want the opportunity to talk to them and so usually i'll time them out and if they're timed out this means they can't chat they can still listen and so usually at that moment you know whatever depending on what they said i'll talk with them or i'll share the gospel with them i'll say Hey, you know, I don't know what you're, what's going on, but hey, we love you. We love for you to be here, be part of the community, and so we'll handle it that way. But you know, if it's if it's just too repetitive, like if they're just they're just there to cause trouble, just we ban them. I mean, you hate to do it, but we'll ban it. <laughs> you know, you have um, to sometimes because sometimes people are just there to be troublemakers. Right? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. It doesn't happen so so often for at least for our case, our YouTube channel. Yeah. We receive a, I would say, an extraordinary amount of positive versus negative comments for YouTube, uh, which <laughs> we are super happy about. Yeah, that's awesome. It happens, and sometimes you have to do something about it because yeah. Uh, when and start... that my my one exception is I do have a zero tolerance for if like my kids are on stream, and so sometimes my daughter will come out and she'll hang out and. So I'm Dr. Hills and she's Princess Hills. That's her name, her gamer name. And uh, I do have kind of a zero tolerance. If someone comes in, says something about my kids. Yeah, you're out. Uh, yeah. Sorry. But that's that's my one exception. Okay. It does make sense. Yeah. All right. One last question about 
streaming. And then we move on to the last part of the interview, which is how to monetize your passions and turn that into income streams. The last question I have here is how do you go about promoting your live streams? Like on do you use social media? How do you let people know your live? So this is a uh really important for streaming, clearly, because there's no discoverability on Twitch. So the one thing you don't do, we'll start with what you don't do. Don't go to someone else's stream. This is just, it, this is Twitch culture. Don't go to someone else's stream, send three messages and say, all right, I'm going to go live now. We know you're there to self-promo and it, it's really in bad taste and it's really frowned upon on Twitch. So if you're, you guys are thinking about streaming on Twitch, don't go to another streamer's channel and tell them you're about to go live. It just, it leaves a bad taste in their mouth. Because a lot of times what you'll do, if you go in and you hang out and you build an actual relationship with a streamer, what will happen is, uh, they'll see that you're live. You know, if they see that you're live, they may raid your channel. And so what a raid is on Twitch is you take all of your viewers and you send them to another channel. And so at the end of your stream, I, most Twitch streamers raid out at the end. That's what they call it, is raiding out. And so if you've been cool and you've actually built a, a relationship with the streamer and the community around him, you'll, he'll probably raid you or she'll probably raid you at some point. But if you come in talking about how you're going to go live or you can't grow on Twitch and you, you have no viewers, like, we know that that is just a different way to self-promote and it's really frowned upon. So the correct way to do this is one, to build an audience on another platform, yep. YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, any of those work. And so then when you go live, you can post on there. You can also be telling people that like in your videos or in your posts that you stream on Twitch, you can have a link in your, your bio or you can have links, all the platforms have somewhere you can put links. You can have a link leading to your stream and so you can always post it there. But one thing that I, I don't think enough streamers do is I really think you should build real genuine relationships. I don't love the term networking here because networking kind of infers that you're using someone for the view. But when I first built my community, I built it because I was part of a Christian gaming streaming organization called God Mode Activated. And I just built relationships there. And it wasn't that I was trying to get viewers. I was just there playing games with people and hanging out and being part of the community. And so when I went live, people wanted to come hang out with me. And people can tell the tell a difference in, in when you're genuine and when you're not. And mm -hmm. so like if you're just trying to make a friend with someone so they'll watch your stream, they kind of know. Yeah, because uh, there's a lot of other people also doing that. But if you build real relationships, they'll want to come hang out with you. And so I, I think build an audience on other platforms. Uh, and that, I mean, at that point, it can be YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, whatever you prefer. So that when you go live, you can post, hey, I'm live, come hang out with me. But I find that if you are, you know, a genuine person and people like you, they'll want to come hang out with you. Mm -hmm. But they still need to know where to find you. So they need to know where to find you. Yes. You create content for other platforms. You, you need to be very mm -hmm. specific in your video descriptions. But I, I, this yes. is my Twitch profile. I live stream every, I don't know, Monday, Tuesday and Sunday, whatever yep. the streaming time is. But yeah, make it very specific and make it easy for people when they click on your profile, when they unroll your description, find you and to, to have a link to actually click through to your other like yep. your live streaming platform. That's very important. It is. And and making it as easy as possible. And so I know that a lot of people use like Linktree and, and Pillar and there's a few others out there. And I even use it. I will say this, I'm about to go away from using them because I've had several people tell me, I mean, we are very much a one click culture, right? The internet age has gotten to where if, if whatever you're wanting is not accessible and two clicks max, you're probably not going to do it. So I've had a lot of people say that when they see Linktree, they just click away. They're not going to go click that and then have to scroll and find the stream right. or they have to find what they want. And I'm like, you know, internally, I'm like, wow, that's lazy. But then I'm also like, but I get it too. Like I want everything in one click. Like one of the things I don't love about YouTube streaming is it's so difficult to find a game category. Like if I wanted to watch Fortnite or Minecraft or whatever game I want to watch, it's very difficult to find live streamers playing that specific a game and that's one thing i don't like about youtube as a gaming streaming platform okay um, so if you're not already following the channel it's really hard to find it and so you've got to make at that point to really build a stream on youtube you've also got to build a video content and so if you're building video content why don't you just stream on twitch where the gamers already are unless you're not yeah. streaming gaming content i get what you mean i guess one thing that youtube does have that could be very appropriate for stream is the membership so for example yes. you could give as a perk to your member your paying members uh, access to streams that other people don't see on your channel so that that would be a cool way of just kind of leveraging the features of of YouTube to get people in your stream. Okay, let's jump into the last part of this interview, which I'm very enjoying so far. So thank you again for being with us, Jeff. My pleasure. Uh, really no, I'm, I'm glad you asked me. So last part is about how do you turn your passions into an income or several income streams. I've done my research, I've done my homework, and I've seen that you are passionate about a lot of things. You're passionate about mm -hmm. your faith, about the gospel, religion. You're passionate about content creation, about graphic design, about Canva, about live streaming, about gaming. Can you walk us through, like, how do you start making money off your passions, like through content creation? How does that work? 
how can someone get started with this? So like you said, I have, I have a lot of passions, a lot of interests. And one of the things that I, I look for whenever I, I'm getting in something is, I don't know, is it something that could be monetized, right? And I think it's something to consider when you're pouring your time into something. Like there are some things we do just for enjoyment. I play disc golf and I, I'm never going to make money at disc golf. Like I'm not that good. But I do stream disc golf. And so I guess in a way I make money on it. But I like to try to share my passions and my my joys and stuff. I like to share it with my community. And so my community is you know, in stream. And so I stream stuff that I enjoy doing. But yeah, I think one of the things to look for is, is if you're in a passion and this is something that you want to consider building into a career is look for avenues that you can monetize it. And so I think one of the main ways that you can monetize things is through like affiliate programs. I think I know, Ronnie, you're very familiar with affiliate programs. And so basically, whatever your passion is, is there a company out there that would pay you to do that in front of people? You know, a, a primary example of this, well, I mean, Canva is a good example of that. They they have an affiliate program. And so we get to make YouTube videos and things like that. And then Canva basically gives you a kickback for drawing people to their software. And now this is somewhere else that I would I would also draw a hard line make sure it's a program, an app, and a company that you actually support. Don't just like, I, I've had the invites to like rep this game and I'm like, well, it's a terrible game. I don't really want to send my, my community is not going to trust me if I send them to terrible things. But find in your passion. And so I've thought about this in, in depth with like, say Dungeons and Dragons. I play a lot of Dungeons and Dragons. I run a campaign. I prep my stuff on stream. And there are companies that have paid me to run Dungeon and Dragon campaigns. And they're, you know, they've had a Kickstarter and they want to send more people to their Kickstarter. And so they say, hey, if you'll run our campaign for this many streams and, you know, put a link in your stream and stuff, then, you know, we'll pay you X amount of dollars. That's a way that I monetize Dungeons and Dragons. I can also monetize Dungeons and Dragons by creating a Patreon where all the stuff that I make for D&D, I have it there free for tiers. And so like, what is your passion? I mean, are you, I don't know, go back to disc golf because I, I love disc golf. If you wanted to monetize a passion like disc golf, you could probably uh, start making disc golf content and start getting paid by disc golf companies to use their discs or to use their bags, you could also start doing coaching. And so uh, this could be live coaching where you're doing like webinars and you, you know, if they want to come in and ask questions, then they have to pay to be there. You could have membership streams on YouTube, like what Ronnie was talking about, where it's only available for paid members. But of course, you have to actually build a community before you'll have paid members. But once you start, whatever your passion is, find out how you can teach it. Um, yep. And if you can teach it, you can monetize it. Okay, I love and, that. And that's that's kind of the, the direction I would go with it. So let's try to debrief. We, we talked about a lot of things there. <laughs> yeah. I think this is a very important message that people will learn from that. A lot of people are trying to figure out how to make an income from their content creation and their passion. So you started at actually thinking, is this something that I can monetize? Because not everything yeah. is monetizable. Some things, you, it's just not going to work. But before you jump like with both feet on a new passion of yours, you are going to be thinking, okay, is this something somehow that I could explore? If I'm going to spend 15 hours, 20 hours per week doing that thing, can I monetize it at some point in some ways? I think that's a very cool and uh, important question to start with before investing that amount of time, especially if you're trying to do a bunch of other different things at the same time. So yeah, think if there is a potential for monetization. Then you mentioned affiliate programs. So I think you mentioned two different things within affiliates, like you, you imply two different things. One is the actual affiliation with a company, a software, a SaaS, or even a product. I've seen you in your YouTube descriptions, you have a link to the material that you use, the gear, uh, mm -hmm. so these are like probably the uh, Amazon affiliate program. Then yeah, you have your Canva affiliate link where you can drive people to try Canva Pro, and then you would get a kickback from Canva for mm -hmm. every people who sign up with your link. And then you mentioned something which is more in the domain of brand sponsorship. So you would work with a specific brand and you will talk about their content, their product, and probably get paid by the brand to to create that video so yeah. that is also something you can do you mentioned some sorts of memberships uh that people can can run but you also told that you probably need to have a kind of some sort of a community first yeah. Yeah. before you can do that so that that would work on twitch that would work on youtube or patreon i've seen that you have a patreon mm -hmm. as well set up on some of your videos so all yeah. of these are platforms that allow creators to receive donations from their audience if mm -hmm. they support whatever they are doing. So there are actually a lot of different ways. Teaching, you mentioned there teaching. Is. So teaching, it goes also different ways. Like you can teach for free on YouTube, but get some money via the YouTube partner program. So that is right. the ads that YouTube is going to sell to like third party companies and that free YouTube users will see in your content. So these ad placements that people see as a creator, 
part of the YouTube partner program, you actually get a percentage of that money that is being paid mm -hmm. by companies to YouTube. Or you could have a course. Like if you are very good at something, you have a course and people right. can buy your course on your own platform or on marketplaces like Skillshare or Udemy. So mm -hmm. there is just so many different ways so many. that people can monetize a passion. I've met people... <laughs> in co-working places in Thailand or all over the world. Like I've, I've had the chance to travel quite a bit and meet a lot of digital entrepreneurs. I've met mm -hmm. this guy, it was selling weapons on Counter-Strike. So basically it was just like selling yep. digital <laughs> weapons to Counter-Strike players. And he was making a good income with this Like, <laughs> Yeah, oh yeah. No idea we could do something like this. Like you sell a game <laughs> item and you make a decent living and you see someone working next to you in the co-working space, you have no idea what they're doing and they're just like <laughs> selling yeah like weapon. yeah it's it's wild it's a it's a wild world we're living in right now it is, it there's is. a lot of a lot of monetization in the gaming world too just like that with gaming with, with, like skins and stuff yeah 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 gaming is huge and it's only going to get bigger i think with all the technology that allows games to be developed in a much easier way so i think in a couple of years like it would be accessible to anyone to design games and oh yeah own games which right now is still not we're still not there but yeah oh, it's so, coming yeah yeah it is probably coming yeah <laughs> all right so thank you for that jeff like all yeah, of absolutely. these insights i try to recap them i hope i did a good job at this but there are lots of options really but i think the main thing is that one you need to bring value to your audience because that's the only way in my opinion to actually grow your audience if you're too like pushy if you're too commercial if you're doing it with an agenda people will smell that and probably not mm. keep up with it like they will probably not tolerate that and just not follow you or just move on but if you're genuinely bringing value to people that's how you grow an audience. And little by little, people will want to support you. They will want to reward you, to give you a tip, to subscribe to your membership, to whatever, because they appreciate you and they appreciate the value you bring them. So that is, in my opinion, the best way to actually build your income online is to bring as much value as you can without really too like focusing on the money side too much at least at the beginning like focus on the value and once you're there people will just they want to to thank you somehow so they will support you mm -hmm. oh yeah yeah all right so let's move on i have two or three more questions for you okay. so can you share a couple of strategies on how you deal with donations subscriptions mm -hmm. membership programs do you have merch like how does all of that like very stream specific monetization techniques so you know number one way that streamers make money and and it's probably the most inconsistent but is through audience monetization and 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 by that i mean specifically through subs and gifted subs and and bits and tips like how we talked about earlier and so you can depending how much you push these and so some streamers push them a lot and they make a really big deal out of them uh, some streamers don't push them as much and some streamers feel entitled to them. And so there's the like the different mix that we have there. The strategy that I prefer is to make them a big deal. And so on, on streams, you can have alerts so that when someone subs, something happens on the screen, right? You get a little notification. It plays a sound. Uh, the whole screen is taken over with a video and it's like, thank you so much. That, right? There are a lot of different things you can do. And a lot of my videos are about making alerts in particular. And so there's a lot of different ways you can do. But I, I think if you're really wanting to push that, make it interesting. And so you can get any number of tools for streams where you can have like a little bar down there. Hey, when we had 100 subscribers, we had 100 subscribers, we're going to do this. And, and you know, I've done, when we hit 100 subscribers, I'm going to eat a habanero pepper. When we hit 100 subscribers uh, or 200 subscribers, we're going to do a 24-hour stream. Something that your community is building up toward and they're getting excited for. And so that is, that's probably the main way um, on, on Twitch and my understanding is on YouTube as well, is to really kind of push subscriptions and, and push bits. One way I used to do it whenever I, I made a lot of dice. And so I would make dice live on stream. And what I would do is every time someone would would donate. And so based on what they donated, it would be a certain dice. And so if they donated, I think it was like a dollar, then they it would put everyone in a raffle for one dice. And if they donated $5, it put them in a raffle for a D20 dice. And what would happen is I would have people that they would build up their collection of dice like this. And whenever they reached a certain amount of dice, I would ship them to them. But right. people were were giving so that we could have more raffles and people could win more dice. And so that was just one way that I implemented monetization of the content I was making at that time. And we would run the raffle live on stream and whoever won it, I would put it in their bag. Their bag has their name written on the back. It's very reflective. It's hard to see. And so that's just one way that I did it. Another way is whenever we stream Dungeons and Dragons. Um, if you sub, you can give advantage 
to any player or the DM if you want to be uh, nefarious. And so advantage means you get to roll your D20 twice and take the highest number. And, and so that's, that's you know, it, it's a big advantage in the game. And so you can do things like that, but absolutely. Merch is just common. I think most people are, are used to have streamers having some form of merch. I have two merch shops, actually. And so I have one that's specific to my channel. Um, and so it's a lot of D&D merch, but it has to do with, with my channel. And then I have a Etsy shop where I use my graphic design skills uh, just to make nerdy mugs. And okay. so the whole, whole shop is called the Nerdy Mug. And the whole point is I make Star Wars, Lord of the Rings, Dungeons and Dragons, Harry Potter, like uh, all the nerdy stuff. I make mugs and they're just there. It's through a print on demand company. So you place the order, uh, it gets shipped directly to you. I don't have to do anything but make the design, which is what I wanted. And so of course, nerdy stuff fits my niche. I'm wearing a Star Wars shirt, there's Star Wars, there's Harry Potter, Stranger Things. Like I, I love nerdy stuff. And so it fits my niche. And so that's another way that my community, they'll order something, they'll post it in my Discord. Hey, I just got this in. I love it. It's amazing. And then that just kind of builds up some other stuff. So there is a lot. Now, I think I'm going to go through that kind of like I did the monetization thing. There's a lot of ways to make money in streaming. And, and I, don't, I can't say if there's like one way that's the best. Um, I prefer diversification. And so having several avenues. And so that's through, you know, subs and goals we have on stream and then through doing things like the dice for tips and then also having the merch shops and stuff like that. I think that's a great uh, strategy. Diversifying your income streams mm -hmm. is probably the best way to do it because if one dries up, then you still have the other yeah. one. And you have the others, absolutely. Your efforts on the other ones. For a very long time, we've been very focused on Canva. And mm -hmm. if ever anything happened with Canva, we would be in big trouble. Sure. Uh, yeah. So, yeah, part of the strategy for our channel this year has been to diversify a little bit, start talking about other things. So we started talking about AI, mm -hmm. AI tools for content creators, I started doing these interviews as well, because that not just like gives me other things to talk about, but also keeps your creativity fresh. Yeah. You know? It, give, it brings new ideas, more people come and interact on the channel. And I think that was the right move because you, can, you don't want all of your eggs in the same basket. Right. You want to diversify Absolutely. your income streams, reinvest some of that income also into your business. You mentioned having a video editor that helps you a lot at that time. This is definitely something I would recommend content creators to invest in because that frees up so much of your time, gives you back so much oh, yeah. of your life. Uh, which is highly <laughs> needed to, especially for someone like you with a family life and a day job. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah, definitely. Well, I'm getting to the end of this interview. I really loved everything we discussed today. Is there any final thoughts you want to share with our audience today? I mean, my thing would be is if you're wanting to start in content creation, whether that's in streaming or YouTube, just, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm more on the, hey, start and figure it out as you go. It's not going to be perfect. It, it's not going to be where you want it. But if you start, it will improve and it will get better. There's no better time that, to start than right now. And so I think that, you know, 2023, I think there's more viewership on YouTube than there is any like cable network. And so right now is the time to start and it's open to anyone. I, I would just recommend if you're wanting to and you're like kind of on the fence uh, and same thing with streaming, Ronnie, if you're on the fence, I think just jump in and give it a shot and then, you know, figure it out as you go. And then, you know, if you hate it, well, you, you tried, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I love that. And I will follow that advice. I will definitely start streaming in 2023 and sooner than later. Yeah. I yes, I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to have to come hang out. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> so yeah, thank you so much, Jeff, for your time. Absolutely. I know you're a busy guy, probably a thousand other things to do today. So I'm going <laughs> to leave it there. You. And uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video.